Well, another year, another new version of Nick Collection from DxO. DxO just came out with a version eight of the Nick Collection. And if you've never heard of it before, Nick Collection is a collection of photo editing plugins and applications, a suite of software, which has been around for a very, very long time. I mean, if you are relatively the same age as me, well, you may remember how far back it goes. I mean, Nick Collection predates like digital raw photo editing. It goes way back to the 1990s. I don't use most of the plugins in the Nick Collection, but there is one plugin that is in in there. There is one plugin in the Nick collection, which I think is worth the cost of the entire Nick collection all by itself. And that is Nick Silver Effects. Nick Silver Effects is a dedicated black and white photo editing application, and it works as a plugin for Lightroom, for Photoshop, and it can also function as a standalone application as well. And if you want to check out that full review where I go into more detail about some of the unique and cool things that you could do with Silver Effects that are different from, you know, just creating a black and white image in some other application, be sure to check out this video up here, and I'll also link to that down below too. This video here today is mainly intended for those of you who are already familiar with silver effects and you mainly just want to see what's new in the latest version and whether this version is worth upgrading to and there is one very notable very important update to the software which for some of you could completely change the way you use silver effects and I'll get to that in a minute, but first let's take a look at some of the minor things, some of the small things that have been changed. Okay, so we're starting here in Adobe Photoshop because uh, there have been some changes, some improvements made to how the plugin version of SilverFX works. If you've been using it through Adobe Lightroom, um, you know, it's pretty much the same as it was before. You just right click on an image and choose edit in SilverFX and it creates a TIFF and you edit it and then it comes back to your Lightroom catalog. No big changes there. The standalone app is also the same. You just drag images in and, you know, you export new ones out. But the plugin in Adobe Photoshop is a little bit different because now it actually looks and um, and functions like a like a normal Photoshop plugin or a more modern Photoshop plugin, let's put it that way, because it is now part of this uh, dockable menu over here, as opposed to that funny little <laughs> Nick Collection floating palette thing, which I never really cared for. And obviously here we have an open button, so we can just open this you know, Photoshop document in Silver Effects, but I wanna quickly point out these options down here. We have options for presets and filters. Now these are favorite presets and favorite filters, which I have uh, starred inside of Silver Effects. And when you do that, um, then they appear here. And basically what this allows you to do, let's say there's a particular preset that you use over and over and over again. Well, you just click on the preset, it opens, it converts to black and white using that preset, and then it sends it right back to Photoshop. But let's go ahead and click open here. We're gonna open up this, uh, this PSD in Silver Effects. If you are a legacy user of SilverFX, you may notice this panel over here looks a little bit empty, right? There's like all this empty space down here. Well, this is one of the big new user interface changes in SilverFX. What you now need to do is come over here to the left column and you need to begin by choosing a preset. So I'm just going to look through here. So when you choose one, now you'll notice that the right panel over here has updated. And now we have uh, what you probably remember, brightness adjustments, contrast adjustments, there are the, uh, the structure controls and all of that. And these filters over here in the right column are now controlled by this panel over here in the left column. And this to me was honestly a little bit confusing at first. I think DxO updated uh, the interface to be more similar to other applications in the Nick collection, so its behavior was similar. And you need to choose which filters you wanna use when you are editing a black and white image. So I can add selective tones, I can add clear view, I can add toning, I can add vignette. And when I'm doing this, the right column over there is updating. I don't know, I don't know if this is necessarily an improvement on the user interface that was in SilverFX before. I kind of liked being able to see everything, you know from the start and not have to you know select a preset and do all this stuff to actually see all the options but i guess it makes the experience and the user interface uh more consistent across the different apps so i guess in the end it's a good thing and it's something i assume i'll just probably get used to and something else that's interesting about these filters over here is that you can open up these filters and you will see that there are now options inside of here there are presets within each filter so that's one of the big changes in the user interface for uh, Nick SilverFX. Another change is that down here at bottom left, you'll see this little uh, original image panel here, this little thing that kicks up. And this obviously allows you to take a look at the original color image you opened. I guess if it was me and I was designing the software, I think I would have made it part of this state here, part of the compare state. I think that would be a better experience than, you know, just kind of sticking it down here in this 
this small little thumbnail, this little panel down here at bottom left. I don't know. I don't find it to be particularly useful. I think it would be more useful and a better experience if it was actually part of the, the main preview here. But anyway, that's another new thing that's in there. Another new feature in version 8 of Silverfax is that now there are local adjustment masks for this uh, panel here for selective tones. And there's also a local adjustment panel for clear view as well. And so now you can apply uh, masks using uh, those two uh, panel settings as opposed to only the basic adjustments, which is where, you know, it was before. I kind of feel like the local adjustments should just be a dedicated, you know, panel in the interface. I think it's a little confusing having it spread out across different filters within the uh, within the app, but maybe uh, maybe it'll make sense with your brain. Uh, but for me, I kind of wish it was more you know, a little more consolidated than it is. Speaking of masks, well, that is the big new feature in Silverfax. That is the thing that is very different about this version, something that very much changes, I think, you know, the way in which, you know, someone will use Silverfax. And to demonstrate it, we need to go back to Photoshop here. Here in Photoshop, as you'll see over here in my layers panel, I have a curves adjustment layer and I have a sky mask applied to it. And when you have a mask here in the layers panel or multiple masks in that layers panel, when you come over here to the Silverfax plugin, and click on open, you will now see this dialogue here that says, you know, that asks you to select masks uh, when you are importing, when you are opening the image in Silverfax. So if I had a bunch of different masks in here, they would all show up here and I could select all of them, but I just have one. So I'm going to click that and click open. And now here in Silverfax, uh, I need to add a basic adjustments filter to it. And then when you come down here to the local adjustments panel, and this works with the other local adjustment panels as well. When you come down here, you'll see this little button with the arrow. Click on that and you'll see this little option here showing you the masks which were imported as part of the image. If you click on one, that mask is added as a local adjustment, which means you can select that mask and then underneath make adjustments to only that particular region of the image, only the area which has been masked. And another cool thing you could do here is duplicate and reuse your mask. So let me just uh, double click on this. I'm going to label it sky because that is what it is. I'm going to duplicate it and invert the mask. Double click on the name. This is ground. And this is very similar to like, you know, using masks in, in Photoshop or in Lightroom. And now I have separate masks, one for the sky and one for the ground. And I'm able to make individual tailored adjustments to each uh, region to each region in the image. And this functionality, by the way, is something you could do before in, you know, Silverfax using the U-Point control system that's in there. It's just that now you're able to import your own masks from Photoshop, which could be, you know, better, more precise masks than what you're able to create in Silverfax and then use them as part of your black and white uh, editing workflow here. Now, I think this is a really notable update for Silverfax for a couple of reasons. One, personally, I've never really cared for the U-point luminosity mask control local adjustment, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's, you know, it's it's just, I feel like today in 2025, it's just not as sophisticated, not as good as the masking tools, which are built into Photoshop, which are built into, you know, Lightroom. It's certainly not better than luminosity masks, which are, you know, the kind of masks that I create constantly all the time using uh, the TK9 plugin in Photoshop. There are other luminosity mask plugins you can use, or you can manually create them, you know, yourself in Photoshop. But at the end of the day, Photoshop is, like if you if you are into masking and creating very, very precise selections in your images, the masking tools in Photoshop are the best, are best in class, bar none. Even though it is a more complex application, even though there is a bit more of a learning curve in Photoshop when it comes to creating masks. For people like me, you know, who are already creating masks and using masks in Photoshop, it's so nice just to be able to import the same masks that I'm using there, create the masks that I want, import them here into Silverfax and use them to be making local adjustments. Now, as much as I like this new mask importing feature into Silverfax, and I could see some people definitely using it, the one limitation of it, unfortunately, is that the local adjustment options in Silverfax just aren't that robust. I mean, there's only a few options here, just a few 
small things you can do, a much smaller list of things compared to the rest of the interface, compared to all the other filters which are available. Wish it had more options. I wish there was more control here. So I guess the way to think about this is that, you know, you want to be doing most of your edits to the global image, to the entire image, and then use the local adjustments for like small tweaks to be, you know, adjusting brightness, adjusting contrast, maybe adding a little bit of structure or taking some away or subtle tweaks and changes to the settings you've applied to everything. And then when you're done editing your black and white image in SilverFX and you want to go back to Adobe Photoshop, you come down here to the bottom and DxO has added some new options here for exporting back to Photoshop. You can export it as a smart object layer. You can export this back to whichever layer is currently active in the layers panel. You can create a new layer or you can send it back with a mask. So I think that pretty well covers all the main new features, all the new stuff, which is part of Silver Effects in the latest version of Nick Collection 8. Nick Collection 8 is a paid um, plugin. I think it's very affordable for what you get. And one of the nice things about DxO software in comparison to certain other companies is that uh, DxO software is not subscription based. Like you purchase it, it's kind of like the old days. You buy the software, you use it for however long you want. For all intents and purposes, it is a very, very similar application to the same, you know, silver effects that we've known and used for many years now. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, silver effects has always been a very unique, a very special piece of software that has been tailor made for black and white photography. So if you are someone who's never used it before and you have a passion for black and white, I think it's definitely worth exploring because you will absolutely get different images and you may feel more creatively inspired. You may like the results you get better out of silver effects than making black and white images with other applications. So it's definitely worth giving a, giving a try and you can do so absolutely free. You can download a free trial, install it and see if it works for you. You'll find a link down below in the video description to do that. Thanks to DxO for providing me with a pre-release beta copy of Nick Collection 8 so I could uh, make this video and make this review. Uh, outside of them providing me with the software, DxO has had no direct involvement in this video. They've not paid me to make this video, they've not sponsored this video, and they've had no editorial input either. They are seeing this video at the exact same time you are. Again, check the description down below to download a trial of Nick Collection 8, give it a try with your own images, and see what you think and let me know what you think leave a comment down below in the video description uh but if leaving comments here on youtube isn't your thing and you want to reach out to me directly feel free to do so you'll find my contact information in the also in the video description down there that's it everyone i'll see you in the next one